So we don't actually have that many satellites doing this. So what is really the limitation factor here? Well, the major bottleneck is wavelength and frequency. Okay. okay. So the signal they're sending, any radio wave, is an electromagnetic wave. It's yep. an electric field that oscillates. So here we've got an electric field that oscillates. So the electric field goes up and then down and That's up right. and then down. And what that means is when it hits your antenna, it causes the electrons to go up and then down and up and then down, which turns into an alternating voltage, which can then drive your speaker and allow you to watch TV or whatever. And you can have waves like the red one at the top, which have a long wavelength. Yep. Or the blue at the bottom, which have a short wavelength. Okay. So one way to measure it is the wavelength of the wave. The other way, is, which is more common, is the frequency, okay. which is telling you how many waves go past a second. All right. So if you count for a second how many red waves go past, that's so one. One. Two. Three. So it's about one wave every two or yeah. three seconds. That means it's a frequency of about half. You're going to make you count the blue ones now, aren't you? Okay, give it a go. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes. nine, ten. All right, uh, okay. a lot. So because it's got a shorter wavelength and they're traveling at the same speed because they all got the speed of light. Ah, you're transferring more waves here, so higher frequency? That's right. So we've got a spectrum and we can measure it as a frequency or as the wavelength. Okay. So a hertz means one wave per second going past your location. Yep. And that, that's uh, too low for any practical radio. So this is called low frequency. That would be between 30 kilohertz and 300 kilohertz. So 30,000 cycles per second and 300,000 cycles per second. It's actually pretty fast. Yeah. And that's called low frequency. And that's got wavelengths of between 10 kilometers and one so kilometer. So really long waves. That's right. Then you've got middle frequency. Now, these names were all came about a long time ago. And in fact, VHF <laughs> and UHF are actually middle nowadays. Yeah, exactly. Because I assume that's very high frequency and ultra okay. high frequency. Yes. So you really want to ditch all the names and call this middle and that low and that high. But yeah. we're stuck with the historical names. And then you get up to high frequency, which is in the megahertz, and very high frequency in the tens of megahertz, all the way up to gigahertz, or even hundreds of gigahertz, which is very high frequency, ultra. And so Something, I assume, extremely high frequency. Yes. Hopefully we'll run it additives. And so we've gone from 10 kilometers to 10 centimeters and lower. And we can ask what these, these do. And there are pluses and minuses of both the low and the high frequencies. Yep. So the low frequency bounces off the ionosphere which means you can send signals around the world. Ah, uh, okay. So that's the sort of listening to shortwave radio. Yeah. Uh, shortwave is actually <laughs> medium frequency. But that's because we, because we have so few waves, we can't carry as much information, and therefore we can't transmit yeah. as much. And they can penetrate buildings. Okay. So you if can... it's got a wavelength of a kilometer, it can even go into the water a bit and yep. through mountains and things like this. So low frequencies used to communicate with submarines, for yep. example, uh, and you'll still get reception inside your lounge room if you're in an apartment building. Yep. It's very easy to build transmitters and receivers. I mean, this is what the school science kits do. Yes. They build these low frequency things. It's just easy to connect components. It's not very directional. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you just send it up and... It goes off in all directions. Yep. And the other trouble is it's very heavily used. All the different bits of the wavelength are already booked by somebody. Yeah, okay. So there's not going to be any f spare frequencies for use okay. for anything else. When you get to the high frequencies, you can carry much more data. More waves and more data. Yes. Um, but it's blocked by buildings and by rain in particular. Okay, so that's not great if you want to send critical signals to your military. Um, and it's very directional. If you have a dish beaming, it only goes that way, whereas a low frequency dish beaming that way will send signals off mm. almost everywhere. So there's trade-offs for doing both. That's right. And what does it use? So here's the frequency used by AM radio, at least yep. in Australia. TV, FM radio is around here in the very high frequency regime. Internet, mobile data here. Yes, yeah, so generally speaking, the 3G mobile is here. And as you get to 4G and 5G, you go to higher and higher. Because you can carry more waves, more data. But also because the 3G band's already full. Yes, yeah, fair so enough. So basically all this is full up, so if they want to get something... So essentially, you need, uh, as it fills up, you need to push further and further here. Yes, yeah, so this is the frontier. You're just yeah. moving down here to find some free space to work. Um, and the C-band and KU-band are the main ones used for satellite communication, ah, and okay. KU is used for direct broadcast TV. And this is actually the sort of same bands used in a microwave oven. Oh, okay. These are ex extremely super, super yeah. high frequency yeah. waves. And when we get to the 5G millimeter wave mobile, which is still being beginning to be rolled out in a yeah. few places around the world, that'll be even higher frequency still. Um, so that's roughly how things go. And the trouble is that every part of the frequency spectrum is booked. Holy Toledo, you're not kidding. So, so these are these different bands, and each color represents a different group use, who's yes. booked it. 
<laughs> so this is, I assume, why someone actually regulates this thing, because yes. it's... So, of course, let's say you're trying to um, communicate with a satellite, and then someone comes and decides to use the same frequencies to broadcast a TV channel. Yep. Neither of you are going to be able to do anything. That's right. Or someone uses a military radar on the band your phone is using or your Wi-Fi is using. So every country has a regulator that divides it up and says you may only use this particular frequency and these frequencies are very lucrative yes. and fought over and as you said people book it in advance because it's all about technology so if you know you're developing there and no one else is you book it so no one else can use it and they have auctions where they and it's billions of dollars yeah. is the price people pay for a, some part of the prime frequency um, you see that down here at the very high yes, say, these, these, these are, are very really small bands. That's because yeah. you can get so much data yes. here. So a small band like here can carry more data than even a whopping. So you don't need a there. huge band. You just need that your little section there. Yes. And so the general frontier is pushing all the way down here to the higher and higher frequencies. But nonetheless, there's a limited number of these things, and that is pretty congested. Everything is used. Mm. So that's a real limit on what you can do in space. That's right.